Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I'm very, very honored to take part in this debate. Again, I did participate in the last debate we had not that long ago. And unfortunately, the situation in Ukraine uh, is not improving. And uh, to start, uh, I would like to make a few comments on the evolution of the situation in Ukraine that is being followed with increasing concern by participating states at the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, which includes Canada and Ukraine. Even more so, as we recall, that Ukraine held the OSCE chairmanship in 2013 and hosted the 20th Ministerial Council in early December as events unfolded outside in the streets of Kyiv. When Ukraine took over the chairmanship in 2013, Canada spelled out very clearly its expectations for Ukraine by, uh, to lead by example. This meant fully implementing its OSCE commitments, particularly those related to the protection and promotion of human rights, democratization, and rule of law. As Ukraine's OSCE chairmanship drew to the end and violence continued to escalate, Canada was, needless to say, extremely disappointed over Ukraine's failure to listen to its people and find a peaceful resolution to the crisis leading to a free, democratic, and prosperous future. When our foreign minister traveled to Kyiv in December and attended the OSCE's ministerial council, he used it as an opportunity to remind the government of Ukraine the OSCE principles and commitments alone were not enough he stressed that as democratic actors, we have all accepted to be held accountable for the implementation of these commitments. The minister capitalized on the multilateral venue of the OSCEs to drive home and amplify Canada's unequivocal message of support for the democratic rights of all Ukrainians. With the OSC chairmanship having been transferred over to Switzerland for 2014, Canada and other like-minded countries have made it clear that the situation in Ukraine will remain a priority in the OSC contest. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I, I, I should have mentioned in the beginning of my speech that I would be splitting my time with the member, uh, uh, my colleague member for Elmwood Transcona. Thank you. Sorry. The OSC was founded nearly four years ago to foster dialogue and co uh, cooperation on security issues. As the only pan European security organization that spans the Euro Atlantic region, the OSC is uniquely placed to help resolve the crisis in Ukraine. Peaceful dialogue is at the core of the OSCE's work and finding common ground through political means it is its uh, reason the trail. Res respect of fundamental rights, such as freedom of assembly, the right to free expression, and giving journalists the liberty to do their work is essential to ensuring cohesive and secure societies. The 2014 OSC chairperson in office, Swiss Foreign Minister Dieter Burkhalter, has proposed to Ukraine Prime Minister Mikola Azarov to draw on the OSC's expertise to facilitate dialogue between the government and opposition, and has offered a range of possible activities over the mid and long term, such as election support. Canada through its mission to the OSCE, has encouraged the Ukrainian authorities to take advantage of, uh, of the Swiss offer. Following a request from the Committee on Human Rights, National Minorities, and Interethnic Relations of the Ukrainian Parliament, the Virkhovna Rada, the uh, OSCE Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights, is currently conducting a review of the compatibility 
of the new laws with Ukraine's OSCE commitments, such as how they relate to public assemblies, among other issues. The review is expected to be completed by early February. Canada's mission to the OSC repeatedly called for such a review to be made with a view of repealing any provisions that would be found to be incompatible with the OSC commitments. As such, Canada will follow closely with the government of Ukraine response to this review. Canada will remain strongly engaged at the OSC in keeping the Ukrainian crisis at the forefront of discussions among the participating states. We have denounced the draconian laws adopted without the proper vote and in violation of parliamentary procedure by the Ukrainian Rada. We have expressed our concerns with the violent clashes and deaths of protesters and called for restraint of, on all sides. Through our statements at the OSCE, we continue to put pressure on the Ukrainian government to engage without delay in a meaningful dialogue with its citizens to find a peaceful and democratic solutions to the crisis. As the former OSCE chairmanship, Ukraine is fully aware of the assistance the OS, uh, OSCE can provide. Canada joins other like-minded in urging Ukraine to take advantage of OSCE tools and instruments to defuse the crisis and pave a way forward. And Mr. Speaker, I would like to add some of my thoughts to my written speech because uh, it's really uh, very important that we here in Canada look very closely of, at what is happening now in Ukraine. I just read the news, very recent news, and uh, I understand that the round of talks between President Yanukovych and the opposition, well, they say it was partially successful, that apparently some of these new laws would be withdrawn. However, the offer of power sharing was not accepted by the opposition. And the leaders of opposition parties that took part in the talks, I don't think they want to be part of the government that oppresses people. I don't think they want to be put in a trap as leaders of their democratic parties. And that includes Arseniy Gatsinyuk, who was offered the position of the Prime Minister. That includes of Vitaly Klitschko, that was offered the position of the Deputy Prime Minister. You know, Mr. Speaker, the reason that people... We have two minutes. Okay, I will try to, to do my best to finish in two minutes. The reason that people are there in the cold, at the squares, in Kiev, and in other cities in Ukraine, because the protest has spread, is because they love their country. Because they want to have their voice in determining the future of Ukraine. You know, if you hear Ukrainians sing their national anthems, one of the lines goes, Dushu itiwo mi powozhin za nashu svobodu, what means souls and bodies will lay down for our freedom. What means we love our country so much that we're not afraid to die to make sure that our country is free and democratic. Ukraine and Ukrainians were fighting for independence for hundreds of years, and they deserve a free country. They deserve a democratic country, and they deserve to be in charge in their own country. You know, the words of the national anthem that it's not used anymore because it's pre-2003, there's another line that says, Vritnim kraju panuvati nedamu nikomu, what means we will not allow others to rule, to rule in our motherland. 
there was no Russia, no other uh, uh, neighbors of Ukraine have the right to tell Ukrainians what to do. And we here in this parliament can join the powers and uh, show this to Ukrainians in Maidan and other places. Victory sign. They will be successful and we will be supporting them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Ottawa Centre. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank my colleague for his, his passion and his determination to see that we, we do support uh, the people of Ukraine. And to that end, to, to talk about the need for action, because clearly the people have taken action. They've done it in the uh, way in which we've seen in the past people who are of democratic beliefs uh, consistently challenge authoritarian regimes and uh, with a peaceful uh, modality and, and to see the use of violence against uh, the people of Ukraine is, is clearly something we all have to be uh, uh, clearly critical of but also saying what we're going to do. To that end I would like to see if my colleague will join with others uh, who have said that they are willing to have targeted sanctions on the individuals who are responsible for these heinous actions. And I say to him, has he brought this forward within his own caucus? Because I know he's passionate, it's clear about the issue. So my question is, has he brought this forward to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, as we have on this side, to bring in targeted sanctions to ensure that we are going to take action when it comes to the government of Ukraine? Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank my honorable colleague for his question. And uh, as I mentioned before, yes, action is very important. We have to work together with other governments and make sure that whatever measures we bring forward would hurt the most those that are behind the oppression, that are behind Yanukovych, and they're running a show there that would include oligarchs and do not, whatever we do, we have to make sure it doesn't hurt people of Ukraine. But yes, I agree, the action together with other governments is necessarily, we have to help Ukrainian people. You know, there are peaceful people. They want to uh, be good neighbors to the people in the North, in the East, in the West, work together with Europe, work together with Russia. They will be neighbors with Russia, I hope, for, for many centuries to come. They want to be uh, good neighbors, but whatever measures we, we bring. <clears throat> yeah, we uh, only have five minutes for questions and comments. We'll try to get as many people in as we can. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've been uh, asking and suggesting what the government really needs to do is look at targeted sanctions. In fact, the, you know, as Deputy Leader of the Liberal Party, back bef just before we recessed, emphasized that point time and, and time again. You know, I have a very good friend, in, uh, Boris Jesnevsky, who has done a wonderful job in making sure that we're kept informed as a, as a caucus in terms of what it is that should be done. And like many Canadians, has you know, a Facebook uh, account uh, that likes to be able to make suggestions, uh, reinforces what the Canadian uh, Ukrainian Congress is suggesting, targeted sanctions. The question that I have uh, for the member opposite, can he specifically answer the question, does the government support targeted sanctions? Why is it taking so long to come and provide a clear answer on that? The Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Mr. Speaker, I would like to say it again that the action is necessary. The action by governments of Canada, European governments, is necessary. You know, if we learn anything from history, we can learn one thing, that inaction can lead to tragic results. Therefore, yes, action is necessary. We should act with other governments the way that would hurt the most those that are behind the oppressive regime of Ukraine. Yeah. 